In this video, we will learn how to analyze hedge fund performance using the standard metrics applied by portfolio managers and investment analysts. These metrics are the Sharpe ratio, sometimes I've also heard Sharpe ratio, the Sortino ratio, the Trainer ratio, and the Information ratio. At the end of the video, I will also tell you which ones are more appropriate to use depending on what is the strategy run by the hedge fund. Throughout the video, I will give you practical examples and I will use two hedge funds in particular. They both run the long-short global equity strategy, but one is managed by UBS, the other one is managed by AQR. Let's start with the most common indicator, the Sharpe ratio. This one measures the excess return of the hedge fund above the risk-free rate divided by the standard deviation. As usually, the risk-free rate is approximated by the yield on three months government bonds. And that's because these securities are very liquid, they are basically guaranteed to be paid out to investors, and so they are a proxy for risk-free investments. So basically the Sharpe ratio tells us what is the excess return for each unit of total risk. Obviously the higher the Sharpe ratio the better, because the fund with the highest Sharpe ratio is the fund that is able to generate the highest excess return compared to the risk that they are running to achieve it. The Sharpe ratio calculated over the last three years is 0 0.5 for a QR and 0.65 for UBS, which tells me that UBS long short strategy has delivered the better risk adjusted performance over the past three years. The Sortino ratio is a very similar metric to the Sharpe ratio. They have exactly the same numerator, but the difference is that with the Sharpe ratio, we divide by the standard deviation of the fund. Instead, in the Sortino ratio, we use another type of measurement of risk at the denominator, and that is the downside deviation. The downside deviation is the standard deviation of negative returns only. Why would we bother to calculate this rather than the normal standard deviation? Well, that's because the standard deviation measures variations of returns around their own mean, around their own average, in both directions, so down as well as up. But in reality, investors are really bothered with negative returns. So that's why we are using the downside deviation as a better proxy for bad risk, so the risk of losing your capital. That's why people consider the Sortino ratio a better measure of excess return per unit of bad risk compared to the Sharpe ratio, because it doesn't give you this exposure to the upside potential. The Sortino ratio for AQR is 1.2 and it's 0.8 for UBS over the past three years. I can make some comments about this. Although AQR has a lower Sharpe ratio, it has a higher Sortino ratio compared to UBS, which tells me that the fund had a better downside protection with respect to its competitor because it displays a lower downside deviation. The trainer ratio, again, exactly same numerator, a different denominator. In this case, we divide the excess return with respect to the risk-free rate by the beta of the fund. And the beta is a measure of market risk because it measures how sensitive the returns of the hedge fund are compared to movements in the stock market. Compared to the beta, the standard deviation is a more comprehensive measure of risk because it measures not only the market risk, but also the so-called idiosyncratic risk. So that that is specific to a company and is not particularly influenced by external factor. The idiosyncratic risk can be diversified away if we have a portfolio that is big enough, but the market risk can never be diversified away. The trainer ratio for AQR is 0 0.8 and for UBS is 0 0.7. So AQR offers a higher compensation per unit of market risk. Last but not least, we have the information ratio. And finally, now we are changing the numerator because instead of subtracting from the average return, the risk free rate, now we subtract the return of the benchmark. The benchmark can be an equity index if the fund manager is specifically trying to outperform equities or it can be the average return of the fund's competitors. At the denominator, we have the tracking error, which technically is the standard deviation of the difference in the returns of the fund and the returns of the benchmark. So it's a measure of how close these two end up being over time. It's also called active risk, and that's because the fund manager could decide, for example, to replicate completely uh, the index, and in that case, they would follow a passive strategy, so they would look like an ETF, and in that case, the tracking error would be zero because they'd be, they would have identical performance, or they could deviate and in that case have a higher active share, 
so we would see a much higher tracking error. The information ratio for both AQR and UBS are negative, equal to minus 0.38 and minus 0.3 respectively, which tells me that the numerator is a negative number, and that it's because the standard deviation at the denominator can never be negative. So it must be that in the past three years, neither of the fund managers outperformed its benchmark. Like with all the other indicators, the higher this number, the better. So UBS, in this case, slightly outperforms its competitor. Are these ratios appropriate for all funds? Absolutely not. It depends on what is the strategy that they run. For example, we use the information ratio only when the benchmark for the fund is easily identifiable. In some cases, the fund manager runs the fund in a way that is completely agnostic and they run it independently from any benchmark. In that case, the information ratio ends up not telling us much, so we don't use it. We use the Sharpe ratio and the Sortino ratio when we believe that the standard deviation is an appropriate measure of risk. So it has to be in a situation where we think that in the fund we find both idiosyncratic or company-specific risks and we find obviously the market risk. We are also implicitly assuming normality for the returns so that the returns follow a normal distribution. This might not always be the case. If there is a very big deviation from normality in the returns and we still use the standard deviation, then we are sort of underestimating the risk of the fund. If we are confident that idiosyncratic risk has been diversified away in the portfolio of the hedge fund, then we can use the trainer ratio. The trainer ratio, remember, compares the excess return only to the beta. So if we believe that we only have market risk, then that might be an appropriate measure. But that is only uh, useful if there actually exists a beta for the fund. There are some hedge funds that run the market neutral strategy, and that strategy targets a beta of zero by construction. So in that case, we will not use the trainer ratio because we are dividing by zero, which is a huge waste of time. Sometimes to have an idea of maximum loss potential, uh, analysts look at historical maximum drawdowns. I've done a video already on that, so I will put a card. Another very common measure is the VAR or value at risk. I'm not discussing it here because that's a whole new topic, so I will do a video specifically for that. But thank you so much for watching this far. I will see you next week.